Mount Washington has a well-earned reputation to be the most dangerous small mountain in the world. Storm increase in violence with great rapidity towards the summit. If you begin to experience difficulty from weather conditions, remember that the worst is yet to come and turn back without shame before it's too late. Yes, this is why they call it the deadliest mountain in North America. Well, here we are now. The last time I was in the Northeast, it was February of 2020. It has been exactly three years since I've been here. And I'm very excited because I'm here with my climbing partner, Pierre. And after three years of being away from the mountain, we returned to the Northeast to attempt a winter ascent of Mount Washington. early January. It's snowing right now. The temperature is quite mild. The creeks are running quite a bit on the mountain. It's very, very wet. Not an ideal situation to be in. As you can see, my hair is all sweaty. My entire upper body is completely drenched in sweat. We're gonna have to deal with that soon. The goal for this trip is very simple. We drove all day today, a full six hours to get to the trailhead. We're gonna hike halfway up the mountain, sleep at the top of the ridge, spend the night, early summit tomorrow morning, and then see where it goes from there. It has been 17 years since I've been on this mountain. Last time I was here was 18. It was my first winter ascent of all kinds. I couldn't be more excited, so let's go.
We just made it to about where we want to be for today. I am all wet, uh, upper body. So, contrary to what most people would think, you don't want to change. What you want to do is you want to actually add some layers over top of all of this and let your body heat dry you out. And as we're going to be stopping now and setting up camp, we're going to get cold real fast. So it's actually the first thing I'm going to do. This is why polyester blends are awesome. I should dry by the time I'm ready to go to bed. I'm warm now, I'm certainly wet, but warm. And I should dry now. Woo. Fuck yeah. Quite luxurious to have a, a water so source running where we are right now. Usually winter camping you spend hours just melting snow to get you ready for the next day. But uh, we were just able to fill up all of our water bottles. Chairs getting all comfortable in the tent. Changing to down booties. Oh yeah baby. He gets to be the first one since he'll be managing the stove for the rest of the night so we're giving him a break. So I'll be <laughs> Full crap. <laughs> God. God. Why? Don't kick the water. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't kick the water. She's gonna be soupy. No. Oh well. 
<laughs> yeah. I was I was pouring it and I was like, man, I'm putting a lot of water in there. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. One of the most useful thing I was ever given by Brit over at Freak of Nature Co. This little holder for my lighter, which really all it does is it makes sure that I always have it in my neck so I never lose it. And in the winter time, it's also always warm. Let's make this place nice and cozy. What do you say? Quick update uh, for everybody. I told you guys how wet I was earlier when we got to camp. And uh, as you can see, I'm actually completely dry up here. My bum and my my bum is a little uh, wet still. I guess I must have, um, I didn't know my pants were uh, uh, were wet there. But other than that, like my full base layer is dry. And even for my legs and butt, they're, they're gonna dry overnight, so. This is how you dry yourself in the winter time. Super useful skill. And this is how you avoid having to bring so much clothes by learning how your body heat and the management of moisture works for you. Of course, you don't try this for the first time up on a mountain, but you do some testing at home and next thing you know, you get to dry yourself even in the winter time on top of a mountain. Oh yeah, it's gonna be so good. You guys know the drill, warm water in the winter. Oh, this is perfect. Let's see how this is looking. It looks actually pretty good. Let's see. Bon appétit. <laughs> Definitely crunchy. <laughs> but good. I like the herbs in it. It's different than what I've tasted before for cooking bag meals. The second I can get in my sleeping bag. That's gonna, that's gonna be a good one. currently five degrees in the tent right now <clears throat> and this is 100% my version of a five-star getaway top of a mountain sitting in the tent in the winter time super comfortable what a day I was just outside taking some uh, nighttime pictures and um, we were hiking in the in the in the in the cloud all day long so we couldn't see much, but there's a full moon outside right now, and the you know the just the wind was kind of blowing off the uh, the clouds, and I could get a really cool um, image of Mount Washington and then Mount Monroe that next to us as well. It was a really cool moment out there. It's interesting too when when you can make yourself a nice little paradise on top of a mountain like this, in a place where this shouldn't be happening. Every time I go on, on, on mountaineering camping trips, there usually are two moments where I have a little bit of anxiety or a little bit of like, oh, what am I doing here kind of thing. The number one is before we start hiking at the car, usually I'm, I'm, I'm a little anxious just because I know what I'm getting into. So that's number one. And then the second is when I get to camp after a long day and I know that I still have one or two three hours of you know camp duties getting set up and making sure I get nice and comfortable drying out and all that and when we made it to the top here earlier today I was just like I, I just went right back there I just like oh, what am I doing here but then just refocus and then and then uh, here we are now comfy as all hell so it's pretty good <laughs> so the plan for tomorrow is to get up at uh, 5 30 early wake up call Try to be packed by first light, 7.30. Hopefully be on the summit by 10, 10.30, and then uh, 
we'll see where we go from there. So have a good night, everybody. I think I'll skip coffee this morning. Agreed. I have zero desire to poop on top of this mountain. Yeah. But drink water. Yeah, water, a couple of bars, summit. Yeah, sure. You have to learn to auto feed your bar. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't need your hands. Cooking in your tent vestibule should be done on your own risk. Oh yeah. Just the right amount. Everything is so much infinitely harder up here. There's no visibility. We have a good amount of wind. And with no visibility, getting lost is one thing, but also we can't see the weather coming in. So, uh, I don't know if we're going. So goal is to get up the first little ridge here, the first little peak up here, see how we feel, see how it looks like, and then make a decision from there, so. Washington and 17 years ago when I was 18 I came here with two of my buddies and we hit very very similar conditions a little windier and a little bit colder nonetheless we uh, we headed for the summit we tried to push and we were sheltering just above tree line behind a big boulder when we saw a ranger come out of the tree line telling us to get get down because it was not a a day to get up on the mountain. And we got very lucky because in many ways we could have been part of that statistics back then. I didn't make this video to make it clickbaity or sensationalism about Mount Washington by calling it the deadliest mountain in North America. It is actually 
and actually has that reputation. I made this video to bring awareness to people that if you choose to come climb Mount Washington summer or winter, there's always a chance you're not gonna make it to the top, so keep that in mind. Stay safe, have a good one everybody.